from 10 o'clock body image you may not even realize that you're thinking about it you look in the mirror you turn this way you turn that way you suck in your stomach you pull back your chin and before you know it you are deep in judgment of yourself with all the amazing perks that come with living in the digital age unfortunately there also comes a platform to constantly compare yourself to others and for young people that can be a really big issue so let's look at this on a day when we stop to ask each other how you doing are you okay and uh, actually listen and respond. So let's talk body image today. From the University of Newcastle, Dr. Julia Coffey is here to talk about this with you. Good morning. Good morning, Kaya. Uh, what do we mean when we say body image? Because it is a term that's been around for a while, but maybe we don't have a really good understanding of what we mean by that. Well, I mean, uh, body image is usually about sort of, you know, the mental picture we have of ourselves. And it's sort of a, a term that is being become popular through psychology and, you know, how we appraise what our image looks like and compare ourselves to others and how it forms um, a sense of identity. Um, I've been trying to look at it a bit more broadly, though, because body image kind of makes it seem like it's something that only you only think about if it's a problem. Mm. But actually, we all we all have a body image. We <laughs> all have bodies. So we all have a sense of what it feels like to be in that body and to um, we all, I guess, differently have, um, you know, different expectations put on our bodies and how they should look that are really, you know, depending on gender a lot of the time. So just because um, we don't tend to associate it with men doesn't mean it's not an issue it's just that it tends not to be um, an issue of pressure in the same ways because they don't have the same gendered sort of um, you know implications in terms of valuing of appearance in current <laughs> in the current times but i've been seeing that that's sort of changing that some of the alarming yeah. cons uh, statistics around body images especially especially for our, our young men for our teenage boys yeah it has i mean it definitely is changing as well um as we've seen, you know, those broader drives towards having a particular kind of muscular physique for men has definitely become more normalised. Um, but I've, I mean, I've done studies where I've found different things. The most recent one I've done has really found that the men I spoke to just had a t totally different way of relating to their bodies mm. than the women in that they said, look, you know, I've cared about this in the past. I, sometimes I wish I was more muscular, I looked better, but ultimately, a, I don't really have to care about it because I just focus on what my body can do. It's really useful for my work. It doesn't sort of prevent me from living my life, where like as in worrying about my body. Yeah. Whereas the women were just sort of like, I just can't get past this. I'm trying so hard to like make myself feel better and have a positive body image, but I just can't. And I've really, you know, seen gender, those kind of normative gender roles, which place so much value on women's appearance. Um, as being the main source of that. And there's nothing, that doesn't preclude men from feeling no. that too, yeah. of course, at all. But that was just sort of how it was described to me recently in the study. But um, it, yeah, it's definitely changing with, um, it, it, basically you can say that um, if the more men start to feel like appearance and um, having a particular kind of body is a source of value and maybe, but if it's the only source of value they have to them, if they're maybe a professional sports person or that they sort of really put their identity around having a, looking a particular way and looking, that being looking good, yeah. the more that is central to them, then the more kind of likely they will be to suffer the impacts of body image around that. Mm. We think uh, a lot of young women in this space, uh, what are the pressures that our, our young women feel when it comes to body image? Uh, it's still mainly, I mean, changes sometimes, but it seems to be pretty enduring in relation to that, uh, you know, slender toned kind of ideal that we see a lot more and more in, um, well, it's been around in social media for a while, but that's certainly um, an ideal that's been in the media and then just translated into social media. Um, and that's, you know, incredibly difficult to live up to and we all kind of know that it's unrealistic a lot of the time but it's because it's held up as this ideal and that there's sort of a sense that those bodies are somehow worth more or they will be able to live like a happier life or something mm. through through having that kind of appearance and I found in my studies it's just simply not true like it's this ideal and um but often those people who um you know have met those ideals through working incredibly hard sort of feel trapped into it and don't have don't feel like they have a way of being outside of that whereas of course our bodies change over time they change in response to different stuff going on in our lives and we get sick or if we get injured or you know we get older 
it's sort of impossible to live up to these things because our bodies are constantly changing and um, the less rigid kind of appearance ideals we can hold generally is the only way to get around these things or to try to get through them. And I, I feel like, you know, this is where someone like Serena Williams comes into this conversation because she works out more than anyone else. She is incredibly fit. She is the mm. best at, you know, what she does, but she will never be a size eight and that's okay. Yeah, exactly. And the people I've been speaking to lately, those who are able to kind of try to have a more positive sense of embodiment for themselves are the ones who are able to really feel that, you know, to be like, look in the mirror and be like, this is what I look like. This is just my face. This is just my body. This is just how it is. And I'm, you know, I've got to be okay with that. And I'm, I want to be okay with that. And mm. I mean, I also don't think it's fair for us to, to be put on us to just sort of manage this all in our own heads it really comes from the people around us and from the kind of environment we're living in in terms of if you have other people telling you you know um i, I value you for all these other things that you do like what you look like doesn't matter because look at all these other awesome this other awesome person you are in all these other ways then it makes it a lot more easy for people to feel like it doesn't matter how important yeah. is, is language around that? I had a um, one of my friend's toddlers look in the mirror and say, oh, you know, at four, I'm, I'm ugly. And I was like, where do you even get that word from at the age of four? How do we have to be careful with our language for our young people so that we are creating, you know, you are, yeah. you are smart, you are... No, I don't even like the word. Yeah. It's even hard to, like, know what to say because for so long we're like, oh, you're so cute, you look so beautiful. But how do we have to change yeah. that language? Look, I've got a four-year-old as well, so I'm <laughs> conscious of this. But, um, you know, it's not that you can't say you're beautiful, it's, but it's just about, I guess, making it up just one of the many sorts of things that you say, you know, like, oh, that's such a creative thing you've done, or you're so smart, you're so generous, you're con so considerate. Just, you know, trying to kind of have a bit broader vocabulary that we use to praise kids for hmm. um and you know they pick up lots of other stuff at childcare or hmm. other things and kids judge each other's bodies from a very young age too but if you're i mean all you can really do is try to give them a broader range of sources of value for themselves and <laughs> yeah and hope that that goes in for yeah. i'm doing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one step at a time we will talk yeah. about the stress on parents after the news don't you worry about that we've got you covered for that as well julia uh, for for those of us who might be worried about um teens in our life as well where we might start to see some of those really problem uh, behaviors around um body image where can we go for a little bit of help and education um, so the Butterfly Foundation is a really good one for body image, particularly um, for eating disorders for young women. Um, and um, Mission Australia has some really great resources, as do Headspace. Mm. They've got some really good online um, resources that people can just, young people themselves can just look up and not have to, um, you know, make an appointment for and that kind of thing. But, I mean, the, the most supportive thing we can hope for is that people will feel like they're able to talk about these issues with a friend or um, a parent or a teacher or somebody to say look I, this is really impacting me and um, I'm really I'm really not okay with it because it, it really is such a widespread common thing so they shouldn't feel bad about that mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, just seeking help however they can, whether it's through online things first and even, you know, talking to a, a doctor or a, um, a counsellor if possible or a school counsellor. There are really good resources around that, but it has to be, it ideally has to be sort of a whole, um, a whole person approach with all the people around them too to try to um, address this. It's not just up to, these problems don't only come from young people and mm. from their uh, people's heads, if that makes sense. Yep. These issues come from society and from our cultural norms around body ideals. So we all need to kind of take responsibility for um, trying to make a more positive environment for people. And we can start today on Are You OK Day, the perfect day to start. Julia, thank you for having this conversation with us this morning. Thanks, Kaya. Dr. Julia Coffey there, Senior Lecturer in the School of Humanities and Social Science at the University of Newcastle. You're